back to another video from HSTV and in today's video as you can see by the video title I'm going to be going over the MBCHB year 4 course here at Edinburgh University. If you've been following the channel you'll know that I've just finished my fourth year of medical school so I thought this is the best time just like I did with year 1, 2 and year 3 to go over everything that I did this year and to some extent this might not be useful for the future years just because things are likely to change year on year however it can give you a good idea of the sort of thing to expect if you're going to be starting your clinical years here at Edinburgh so I'm going to be running through all of the specialties and conditions and the knowledge that uh, we go through and then also the placement side of things and what to expect there so hopefully uh, you know you'll leave knowing a bit more about what I've been up to this year all right, so let's start with the specialties and the conditions that you will be learning about in the knowledge part of the year. So for me, I made this um, little document, this little sheet uh, of paper that I wrote everything on, like the whole curriculum. I thought that would help me uh, kind of tick things off as I went along. A lot of the learning in fourth year is quite self-directed, so I've been using, uh, you know, the university lectures, but as well as that, things like PassMed and YouTube to help me understand a lot of these conditions. Unlike like the preclinical years it's a lot more about the presentation investigation the differential diagnosis and the management of conditions as opposed to the pathophysiology although some of that is still tested so um, I'm gonna give you a quick run through of all the specialties I'm also gonna link actually this document in the comment section below in case anybody uh, wants to use it and if it'd be useful for you guys. So uh, starting off we did the four main big specialties so gastroenterology, uh, cardiovascular, neuroscience and respiratory. Uh, also hepatology as well as part of the gastroenterology section then we also did uh, endocrinology, rheumatology, hematology, nephrology, psychiatry and infectious disease. So that's quite a lot. Um, I would say that although this might seem quite overwhelming right now, actually a lot of these specialties that you'll be learning about in the knowledge section will go quite nicely hand in hand with the stuff you see on placement so you can actually time how you want to study these. Um, some people will begin on other blocks and I'll talk a bit more about the blocks of placement um, but it means that different people are working through the knowledge uh, at their own rate and at different parts where they seem it's um, best fitting. So for example like my first uh, placement block was gastroenterology so it just made sense that I would cover the GI and hepatology section um, at that time. But then other blocks like the medicine of the elderly block um, that is a bit more varied and you have a bit of everything so uh, for that people um, might want to cover the four main specialties first and then move on to endocrinology um, etc. Um, another thing to note so nephrology so all your renal kind of stuff and hematology as well and a lot of the oncology as well I think is covered a lot more in your fifth year of medical school so it's something that's kind of a part of fourth year because it's really important and you know you can't really do a lot of things without knowing about the kidneys um, but it's not something that's heavily tested upon in the knowledge so um, the uh, university does give us a breakdown of what uh, how many kind of questions to expect for each part of the knowledge exam um, but you know I don't want to go into all that detail this is more an overview of the year so hopefully um, those specialties uh, I, I personally felt they were quite nice very relevant it helps you to answer a lot of the questions that your family and friends ask you all the time makes you feel like a doctor and I think they're really nice um, so yeah check out the document though if you want a full extensive list of each condition within the specialties all right, let me run you through the placement blocks. So you've got five blocks in year four. Um, I'll just run through them. So specialty one, um, that is basically not your choice what kind of ward you're placed on, but specialty one encompasses either cardiology or cardiothoracics or stroke or neurology or vascular surgery. So you could be placed on any one of those wards um, as part of your specialty one block. Specialty two block encompasses GI, respiratory and infectious diseases. So I was put on the GI block. Um, again, that is all just random. The other block that you have is your general medicine block. So general medicine, it's general as it says, but it's actually kind of complex conditions as well. So it's mostly patients coming in through A&D or AMU. Um, 
and they're put onto the Gen Med block beca ward because they might have a few things going on that not one specialty can take care of on their own. So a lot of the time it can be like electrolyte disturbances, maybe some alcohol abuse, uh, kidney disease and heart disease all at the same time that would be a gen med block. Also kind of infections and things coming in through there as well. That's what I saw on my block there. Um, the other block is your medicine of the elderly block. So it's in the name, it's medicine of the elderly. So for me, my ward was actually more focused towards stroke rehabilitation. Um, so yeah, it's uh, kind of all in the name, but you know, medicine of the elderly, because we, uh, you know, in the UK, we've got an aging population, you'll actually see some uh, really uh, great conditions and comorbidities and how all that is managed within your medicine of the elderly block. And the last block is GP, so general practice. Now, unlike the other blocks that were five weeks each, uh, your GP block is actually 10 weeks. Um, now, why is it 10 weeks? It's not really 10 weeks in a clinic. So you're attached to a GP practice, but actually you only attend placement every alternate week. And in the off weeks, you will have teaching. So that's tutorials in endocrinology, rheumatology, um, also like nephrology as well. Um, and then you'll also have some outpatient clinics to attend. So for example, you know, if you've not had any neuro all year, you might be able to attend a neurosurgery outpatient clinic, or um, sometimes they also get you to attend a diabetes clinic. Just some of these other specialties that you might not have a strict opportunity to attend within your other blocks. So that's quite a lot there that I've explained, but it's five blocks um, each five weeks, except the GP block, which is 10 weeks. Another really common question that comes to mind is which hospitals you could be placed in. So as you know, in Edinburgh, we are part of NHS Lothian and NHS Lothian actually covers quite a large area, uh, which is good and bad uh, for the medical students who might have to travel out a little bit. So uh, obviously the Royal Infirmary of Edinburgh is your main teaching hospital, but actually you could be placed at the Western General Hospital, which is in the Northwest of Edinburgh. You could also be placed in St. John's Hospital, which is in Livingstone, West Lothian um, and there's also the Royal Victoria Hospital in Fife so yeah bit of a radius that you have to work around also remember that some of your tutorials could be placed at places like the Western General um, your outpatient clinics could be in different places as well so yeah, just that's something to be aware of. The other thing is, if you are going to be placed at St. John's Hospital or the Royal Victoria Hospital, then they do offer accommodation for you there to make things a bit easier. So uh, yeah, you have to apply early for it and things. I got pretty lucky this year. I was placed all centrally at the Royal Infirmary and then my GP practice was also quite central. Again, your GP practice might be somewhere out of Edinburgh a little bit and then you might actually have to spend 10 weeks outside. So just something to be wary of but for the most part traveling around Edinburgh is pretty easy. You've got good bus routes and uh, if I think there's also a thing if you're like a, on a 20 mile radius they can give you money for your petrol as well. So yeah just to be aware of that. Okay in terms of what you are actually going to be doing on placement you're actually going to be completing your clinical portfolio. So obviously you've got the knowledge part, you have got the OSCE part which I'll speak a bit about but as part of your placement you know they want you to be getting involved, they want you to be proactive in taking initiatives, getting involved in activities right. So as part of that you have a clinical portfolio to tick off. Now some of these activities are specific to each of your blocks uh, that you have to do for each block and then there's another clinical portfolio list that you have to complete throughout the year so you can spread those activities out. I'll just run through them quickly here for you so um, as part of each block um, you know for example in your specialty one block you would be required to do two mini clinical evaluation exercises that could be something like a history or an examination or some kind of clinical communication. Um, so you would do two of them. You would also do a direct observation of procedural skills, something called a DOPS, um, and you might be required to do one or two of them. That could be things like attending an MDT meeting, a session with a nurse or a physiotherapist or occupational therapy. Um, yeah, um, the other thing you have to do is a CBD for each of your blocks. A CBD is a case-based discussion. So you would actually pick a patient that you found interesting and then write a case about them as well as a reflection. So by the end of the year, you would have actually five, six, actually you would have six 
case-based discussions because in your GP block you have to do two. So be aware of that. Now, also on the GP block actually, something to note is your clinical exercises might be a bit different. So, um, you know, you might be required to do a few face-to-face -face appointments and then a few telephonic appointments. Um, but all of that can change, it's likely to change. Um, so just be aware of what's required of you at each placement. I just made a list on my phone so I was aware of what I needed to get ticked off right from day one and I was getting involved in things. I would normally give myself like a day or two to ease into the ward and then after that I'd be on just trying to get these things ticked off. Once you've got them ticked off then it's quite easy for you to just kind of relax and actually get yourself involved in things you're interested in. Um, in terms of clinical skills that you are required to get uh, signed off on throughout the year. You know, these are things that you need to be supervised on most of the time, but it's something that you should be confident in doing by the end of the year. Uh, so you've got venipuncture, cannulation, urinalysis, administering supplemental oxygen, assessment of an unwell patient, uh, recording vital signs and completing a news chart, checking blood glucose and performing a 12 lead ECG. So again, all of these activities aim to keep you busy on placement so you're not just standing in a corner. <laughs> So that's all brilliant, you're having a great time in fourth year, you're learning lots, there's lots to do, you're having great fun on placements, but then you realise that you have to do some examinations as well and you've got to get through the assessment procedure in year four. So in year four you've got two formative assessments, one in December and the next in March. So from personal experience your December formative will probably go quite bad just because you wouldn't have covered the whole course contents yet, different people will be learning different things, some of you will be confident on other topics uh, than uh, your, your peers. Um, you'll also be kind of uh, still getting used to the whole placement and balancing your studying routine. So yeah, the December formative, don't have high expectations from it. Obviously give it your best. It gives you a good opportunity to get used to the style of questions that you could be asked, but truly just treat it as a development exercise. Um, the March formative on the other hand, you actually feel a lot more confident on something does click into place as you move into semester two of year four. That's how I felt anyway. Um, and then you've obviously got your summative assessments in the May of fourth year. So you've actually got 10 OSCE stations. Now, speaking a bit about OSCE just now actually, so for OSCEs you would be required to do your four main um, examinations. So you're looking at your cardiovascular examination, your GI examination, you've also got your respiratory examination, and then as part of neuro uh, you've got kind of three examinations, so upper limb, lower limb, or cranial nerves and you would be expected to know all of these uh, for your OSCEs you could be assessed on any of them. Uh, you are also expected to know how to perform an A to E assessment uh, that could also come up in your OSCE um, and then you've obviously got your history taking and explain and advice communication skills that they could also test you on. So that's you know in a nutshell what your OSCEs are, you've got 10 stations, you need to pass I believe it's 6 of them, that's what it is for our year um, and then that's that. You've then got two knowledge exams, both 80 questions each, and for us it was like Monday and then Tuesday, it was kind of consecutively in a row, which was definitely a stressful few days, um, but yeah, I think the knowledge exam, I found it quite tricky actually, uh, more tricky than the formatives, but maybe that's just how I felt and that's how I was under the pressure with the nerves, uh, but really it, it should be similar to the sorts of questions you were getting in your formatives. The university does give out quizzes and other things as well to help you um, know what level of knowledge you're required to have for your exams. But yeah, that's pretty much the summative assessments summed up. Okay, another really common question that I've been asked and you know, something that runs through everyone's head uh, even before starting fourth year is what happens if you don't pass the exams? So if you don't pass the formatives, it's not the end of the world. You've obviously still got time to work on things and there's support from the university that you can get. However, uh, when it comes to the summatives, if you don't pass your OSCEs, you will be given another opportunity to sit uh, these exams called sequentials. So your sequential exams, they're not like a reset, but it gives you an extra chance to bring up your overall mark so you can pass the overall year. And you can have sequentials for your OSCEs or for your knowledge. So actually the turnaround time for results after you've done your summative assessments is quite quick because they let you know if you need to sit a sequential or not. 
So yeah, and if you don't pass the sequential, then you have to reset the whole of fourth year. Um, but don't think that far into the future. The majority of people, they do pass and it all ends up being fine. All right, guys, well, that was a bit of a whirlwind tour of year four at Edinburgh Medical School. Um, as I said in the beginning, things are more than likely to change. They changed for our year, they'll probably change for future years because improvements are constantly being made um, to the course. Uh, so yeah, I hope that you found this useful and interesting. And I'd love to hear about how fourth year is at other medical schools as well. So feel free to uh, put that down in the comments, share your experiences, but also if you have any questions for me, uh, feel free to ask ahead. So I'll see you all in my next video. Thank you for watching.